Dr. Rhett Polka here at the University of Arkansas, day two. Uh, just a real quick wrap up of what we did on day one. We went through uh, the history of 180 physical therapy system, where it came from, uh, how it's built on science, the facts of physiology, neurology, anatomy, uh, biomechanics, all that kind of stuff has to go together to build our base. So we actually um, are building it on scientific fact and we can prove everything that we do. Uh, we also got into uh, motorability, why we want to get rid of flexibility and replace that with motorability, which is motion, strength, and stability, which keeps you not only safe, but also helps you perform at your best. We also got into the kinetic matrix and why it's important to look at everything as a whole because everything works together. Uh, and also got into the recipe for injury. Um, now, when we get into the active warm-up, remember that we're looking for those ingredients in the, in the uh, recipe for injury because we've got to be at the end range of motion. We've got to be uh, going through a transverse plane through the entire kinetic matrix and get our athletes in and out of those positions in order to uh, warm up properly. All right, so we're gonna run Coach Stewart through the functional screen, take a look at what he looks like. Then we'll run through the active warm-up and then we'll redo the screen to see if we uh, take care of any limitations. So first thing on the screen is gonna be a, a gait assessment, which we won't do right now, but basically watch your athlete or patient walk from the front, from the back, and from the side, and just kind of make mental notes on what you see and uh, what you think they're limited on with a, with a uh, gait analysis. Next one is going to be a standard toe touch. So all Coach Stewart's going to do is go feet together. He's going to bend and touch his toes, see how far it gets, what it feels like, and then he's going to come back up. Okay. We can also look at him from the side. So if he does the same thing, bend, touch toes. So we're taking a look at lumbar spine, hip range of motion, and then coming back up. All right. Next one, Coach is going to stay in the same position, and he's just going to go hands on his hips and lean back. We'll just check out lumbar extension. Good, and come back up. Just make note of any pain they might have. Good, and then um, go ahead and turn and face me, coach. We're gonna go arms across his chest, and we're just gonna rotate each direction. Just see how far his shoulder comes around in relationship to his uh, feet, and have him just tell you anything that he feels as far as limitation or restriction. Now let's go uh, feet apart, and we're gonna check his squat. So we want a full depth squat down as far as you can, Try to get his butt to the ground and he's stiff right now. Okay, come back up. Now if he turns and faces the other direction and does that full depth squat again. Okay, so that's about where he is before we do the warm up. Um, make note of dorsiflexion, knee flexion, hip flexion, lumbar flexion. That butt wants to drop down and kind of curve underneath when you get down to the bottom. Now we'll go single leg squat facing me. And we'll just have him do three in a row. So we're just taking a look at foot stability, see what that hip does, make sure they can pronate and supinate at the foot, ankle, knee, and hip. And then we'll switch it and go three on the other side. You can compare side to side if they've got, if you thought you saw a restriction in the squat because of a tight ankle, that should come out and be pretty obvious when you do the single leg squat. Then we're gonna go upper body screen, just both arms straight up over top. Good, and then back down, arms out to the side. Just make note of any asymmetries in the shoulder coming across the front and the front and behind and behind. So if you've got a shoulder patient and they're reporting impingement type symptoms here, you know you've got a shoulder you need to exam when you get on the table. Then we're going to go uh, cervical spine, so we'll just go chin all the way to the chest and flexion, cervical extension, and then rotation and rotation. You can also get in and, and check out the elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, that kind of stuff. Um, and also with your athletes make this screen functional. So once you get through that basic screen, now start making things look sport specific. Make them pitch if they're a pitcher, make them get out of a stance if they're an offensive lineman. All that kind of stuff comes next. Alright, here we go with the beginning of our warm-up program. We're going to do our um, functional isometrics first. Now remember, Functional screen, we're looking at things as far as joint range of motion. Our uh, isometric exercises are going to be muscle specific, not motion specific. So this first one we're going to do is sp specific for the lower abs. Um, so what uh, Coach Weddle and Coach Stewart are going to do are go arms across your chest. They're going to take the right elbow, put it on their left thigh. Now once they get there, they're going to squeeze the lower abs like they're doing a crunch and they're going to hold that five seconds. So what this is doing is facilitating the lower abs, namely the pyramidalis. Then they're going to go opposite direction. Always squeeze after you get in position. And if you notice their low back is rounded over, it's in flexion. 
you can't squeeze abs if your lumbar spine is a neutral or extension. Okay, so they're going to go side, side, and then straight down, hold five seconds. So all the isometrics are going to be hold five seconds, repeat five times, nice and slow. So everything in their body is relaxed right now except for lower abs, which is what they're facilitating. All right, so that's what the abs will look like. Now we're going to have uh, both coaches stand up for me and just turn and face that direction. There we go. And now we're going to do the glute isometric, which is basically hands on hips, barely lean back, so we want to be in a little bit of hip extension, and then they're going to just squeeze butt cheeks and hold five seconds. So what we're trying to do is get their glutes to pull them into hip extension without their lumbar erectors kicking in. So this should you should only feel this in the glutes, not in the low back. If you feel it in the low back, you're probably leaning back too far. So the same thing as the abs, hold five seconds, repeat five times. All right, now what we're gonna do is we'll uh, focus on Coach Stewart for the upper body stuff. So go ahead and face that direction, Coach. All right, so A's, T's, and Y's for scapular stabilizer. So if you've got somebody with a tight shoulder and you figure out that they've got problems with upper trap, middle trap, lower trap, rhomboids, that kind of stuff, here's what you're gonna do. So A position is basically just a capital A. So he's just gonna take his arms back and he's just squeezing shoulder blades together in the back. Hold five seconds, relax. T is gonna be a capital T, so it's straight back, squeeze together. And then back down. And then Y is gonna be up over top. His thumbs are pointing backwards. He's kind of squeezing down and back. Now we can also throw one in there for the pecs, which would be arms in front, make a fist with one hand, cup it with the other hand, squeeze pecs together, hold five seconds. So A's, T's, and Y's plus the pecs, hold five, se hold five seconds, repeat five times. All right, time for the active warm-up matrix. We're gonna start with a lunge walk with a twist. So our coaches are just gonna take a, an exaggerated step, lunge down, twist, opposite hand over the foot that you step with. Nice and easy, slow and controlled. Now we're gonna change it. We're gonna go low twist. So notice how the shoulder's coming down inside the knee. Their trunk is straight. So when they get down there, go ahead and hold it down there. The knee comes outside the shoulder. We don't twist the trunk to accommodate the knee. That will help with uh, opening up that hip and go nice and slow. All right, karaoke with the squat. We're gonna karaoke footwork, squat all the way down. Front foot stays flat, back foot is twisted up on the toes, chest to thigh. If you're tight at the beginning and can't get the chest to the thigh by the end, you should be able to. Remember, this is slow and controlled motion. All right, now we're gonna take a look at a high knee karaoke walk, where it comes up, swing that hip over the top. Up, swing that hip over the top. There we go. Try to keep the shoulders square. We're trying to break that lumbar spine and make it twist. Good. Okay, so with all those exercises, you notice we went from isometrics to slow and controlled um, active warm-up. That active warm-up, we're gonna be in the end range of motion with a ton of transverse plane uh, component in and out of that, be able to get in and out of those positions with good control. Now that we've done stuff uh, slowly, now we can do more of our regular speed karaoke, regular speed lunge walk, uh, lunge walk, high knees, butt kicks, all that kind of stuff. So always think isometric first, get those uh, muscles facilitated, get them kicked on. Then we're gonna go slow and controlled in and out of the extreme range of motion. And then we're gonna uh, speed things up and make it more uh, sport specific and game uh, speed. All right, now that we've run through our isometrics and our warm-up, we can retest Coach Stewart's squat. He was a little tight the first time, so if we have him squat down as far as he can now, and notice that he's uh, barefoot, no shoes. This is easier with shoes on than without shoes on, so now he's getting down there nice and low and coming back up. So if we put his shoes on, he could probably drop down another inch or two just because the shoe will have a little bit of a heel in it that will help him uh, cheat so he doesn't have to dorsiflex as much as he does when he's barefoot. So now if he goes down... He sinks down a little bit further. Actually, that's pretty, pretty darn good. Okay, so full dorsiflexion, knee flexion, hip flexion, lumbar flexion. Good stuff. So uh, that's it for the active warm up. Remember, isometrics first, and we just did the basic, basic stuff. You can always go through and make that progression harder. Uh, for instance, the glute exercise. Next step would be a double leg bridge. 
that gets easy to do a single leg bridge that gets easy you can you can throw in the lat uh, squeeze along with the single leg bridge uh, ab stuff just hit those uh, isometric seated first then you can go through any kind of ab progression that you want to um, same thing with the A's T's and Y's you can add, add a band to that uh, cable crossover machine that kind of stuff just to get things kicked on and moving so definitely if you've got uh, different athletes we definitely would tweak this we wouldn't give an offensive lineman the exact same warm-up as we would a gymnast so tweak it make it sport specific for your athletic uh, population um, but this should keep your athletes going full speed keep them out of the training room and uh, help you keep winning games so we will talk to you next time thanks